The importance of crop rotation in soil cultivation was known to gardeners several thousand years ago. If you always plant the same type of vegetables every year in the same place, the yields will be smaller and smaller every year due to the depletion of the soil. To prevent this from happening, it is necessary to rotate the crops around the garden every year. On our channel, you can find useful video tips for growing various fruits and vegetables. So, if you find this one or another video useful, we hope you will support us by following our channel, liking or sharing the video with those who might find it useful. To make our channel and our work useful to as many people as possible. Crop rotation in the garden is an organized change of cultures on the same soil. Vegetable crops are usually rotated over a period of three to seven years. Cultivation of the same crop on the same soil for several years in a row leads to disruption of soil structure and soil fertility. Some plants use more nutrients than other plants, so growing the same crop in the same place depletes the supply of that nutrient. During growth, plants take fit on side active substances from the ground, which also lead to soil fatigue. The crop decreases over time and the quality of the grown plant decreases also. Plants from the same family should not be replanted in the same place for at least three years because of diseases and pests. This period is generally enough for pests and disease-causing agents that remain in the soil to no longer pose a threat to the species. For crop rotation, we need to know the families of plants because if we planted, for example, onions one year, the next year's crop change cannot be garlic or leeks. Both are from the same family and are attracted by the same intruders and pests. But next year we can plant, for example, cabbage or zucchini, which belong to other plant families. In addition, pests, diseases and weeds get a permanent residence, better conditions for development and spread, and greater opportunities to damage the crop through such cultivation of vegetable crops. In a bed where crops are combined, garden pests will develop more slowly because it will be harder for them to find the plant they feed on. Garden planning and crop rotation in the garden maintain soil fertility and its structure. Pests are controlled, the possibility of plant disease is reduced, erosion is prevented, weediness of the soil is reduced, and biodiversity in the garden is maintained. In the domestic garden, where a large number of vegetable species and flowers are alternated on the small areas, the crop rotation must be planned. When doing the crop rotation, the requirements of individual vegetables should be taken into account with regards to following. Drawing nutrients from the soil, it is considered that vegetables draw heavily from the soil. The impact of pests and diseases on a particular culture. Mutual support of vegetables and self-support, for example, Parsley does not support itself, that's why it is sown in a different bed every year and tomatoes always grow best in the same bed. On the other hand, deep-rooted crops are grown after shallow-rooted crops. Crops that produce large and small biomass of roots are rotated. This way, good soil structure, airiness and drainage are maintained. Plants that have shallow roots, roots that spread horizontally and draw nutrients from the surface layer of the soil are salad, radish, cabbage, cucumber and melon. The plants that have deep roots, those that consume food from the deeper layers of the soil are beans, peas, potatoes, tomatoes, carrots, pumpkins and turnips. Peas, beans, lentils, and broad beans enrich the soil with nitrogen and prepare it for the following crops. 
Plants with a large biomass of roots which bind nitrogen from the air and leave it in the soil are called builders, beans, peas and legumes. Corn and potatoes are soil cleaners. Crops that fix nitrogen are rotated with those that do not fix nitrogen or need large amounts of that element. Weediness is reduced by alternating leafy and root plants and cereal, but also by alternating spring and autumn vegetable crops. Sensitive plants are grown after crops that prevent the development of weeds. The soil on which you plant or sow plants should be under a green cover whenever possible. Sowing and green fertilization are carried out. This prevents weeding and leaching of hummus. The soil also must be mulched and treated with compost, organic fertilizer, for example, nettle fertilizer or banana peel fertilizer, earthworms and some things like that. Vegetable crops are usually classified into three groups according to the amount of nutrients they required. We have demanding plants like kale, tomatoes, leeks, cauliflower, broccoli, cucumbers, potatoes, pumpkins, zucchini, celery and radish. Medium demanding are carrots, onion, garlic, beetroot, spinach, watermelon, peppers, lettuce, melon and sweet corn. And we have low demanding crops like beans, peas and most of the herbs. Before planting or sowing demanding vegetables, it is recommended to fertilize the beds with manure or compost. Medium demanding vegetables prefer compost, while low demanding vegetables need very little fertilizer. The practical side of this approach is dividing the vegetable garden into four or five parts. Different types of crops like cabbage and beans are moved from one plot to another so that they can return to the same place of land only every four years. For the four-year change of cultures, the culture should be divided into four groups. The fifth bed is used for the perennial plants, which are obviously not moved. You can make a list of vegetables you want to grow next year and divide them into four different groups. Determine the place of planting for each of them. Do the same for the following year, but move all crops to another plot. If your space is limited, a three-year change of culture is also a good idea. For the first plot, we will choose peas, broad beans and green beans. Cabbage, collard greens, broccoli, kale, radish, turnips go to the second plot. On the third plot, we put onions, spring onions, leeks, garlic, sweet corn, zucchini, pumpkins, and lettuce. On the fourth plot, we put potatoes, beets, carrots, white and black roots, celery, root celery, and tomatoes. And the perennials are rhubarb, asparagus, perennial herbs, artichoke, and sea cabbage. They are on the fifth plot. The procedure is that it is necessary to choose the vegetables you want to grow and divide them into five groups. The plots are numbered from one to five. Draw the plan in different colors for each individual group. The fifth group is intended for perennials. Next year, move the crops of each group to the next plot. You can also plan a three-year crop rotation. Then the garden is divided into three parts and crops are planted according to their requirements, how much nutrients they draw from the soil. For example, you can plant demanding crops after low demanding crops and medium demanding crops after demanding ones. By rotating the plants, you get a three-year growing cycle. In order to prevent weeds, diseases and garden pests from damaging the harvest in the garden, plants from the same family should not be replanted in the same place for at least three years, up to five years, as long as the soil is free from unwanted inhabitants. The three-year culture change is similar to the previous one. Decide which vegetables to grow and divide them into four groups, as shown in the picture. Draw your plan again and mark which group goes in which color and color it in different colors. As with four-year cultivation, we will leave one color for the perennials. This time it will be plot number four. 
move crops from one plot to the next plot the following year. In this way, simply rotate the plots each following year. This time the plant crops are arranged a little differently. On plot 1 we will have peas, broad beans, beans, onions, leeks, sweet corn, zucchini, pumpkin and lettuce. On plot number 2 we will have potatoes, beets, carrots, white and black roots and tomatoes. On the third plot we will have cabbage, collard greens, broccoli, kale, turnips and radish. And as we said in the plot number 4 we will have perennials, rhubarb, asparagus, herbs, artichokes and sea cabbage. In the three year crop rotation, tomatoes grow on a plot number two together with root crops such as parsnips and carrots. When changing crops, rhubarb is planted on a bed for perennials and can remain in the same place up to 25 years. Different plant species within the same family are attracted by the same diseases and pests, which is why it is important to know which crop belongs to which family of plants, in order to be able to rotate them properly from year to year. It is recommended to plant or sow plants that are compatible with each other and immediately plant or sow another suitable crop on an empty spot on the bed. Lettuce and early carrots can be planted as intercrops on each bed. It is good to write down when and where you planted or sowed a certain crop, when the plant grew and similar data in order to arrive at the most favorable arrangement of plant crops for your garden. In addition to planning which plants you want in your garden, it is also very important to take into account the side of the world where the crop rotation is located, how windy the area is, and the way you will irrigate when organize the beds. In addition to plants influencing each other, they are also influenced by other factors such as the quality of the soil, the amount of minerals and nutrients and clay and hummus in the soil, the presence of living organisms like ants, earthworms, insects, so it is best for you to experiment by yourself. By trying different combinations, you will discover which one suits your vegetables the best. Make a list of the vegetables you want to grow in your garden and arrange them by groups or plant families. It is preferable to make a draft and planting plan on paper divided into as many years as the crop rotation will last. It is also important to keep notes during the crop rotation, weather conditions, climate change. And for any additional questions, write us in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe.